Latin pronunciation. The first part of Latin pronunciation is the double consonant. When you have a double consonant, you should pronounce both. In English, we might skip over a double consonant and pronounce it like a single consonant. For example, with puella, in English we say puella quickly on the double L. But in Latin, you want to say puella. For gessi, you'd want to say gessi. Ferrum. Melissa. So those double consonants get a little bit longer than they would in English. Another part of Latin pronunciation is the diphthong. These come into English as well. However, if we already speak English, then we're used to seeing them and don't give them a second thought. However, in Latin, some vowels are grouped that we're not used to seeing. A diphthong is, by definition, two vowels that make one sound. The first one is I, pronounced like aisle, lie, or dry. We see this in the word puellae and saipe. The second one, au, is pronounced like house or mouse, and we'll see it in laudo and au. A, like in rain or main, and we see it in the word dane day. It still might sound like both vowels are being pronounced, but they really do come across as one. Dane day. The next one is eo. You won't ever find this sound in English, so I can't really give you an example of an equivalent. Two words in Latin, euge and eheu, is what they look like in English, but you want to mash those two vowels together a little bit more. Euge, eheu. This sound is really uncommon in Latin, and you won't see it very often. Oi, as pronounced in oil, boil, broil, and we see it in the verb coipit. We, oui, just like the French word for yes, we, oui, it's pronounced the same way, like we oui or gooey. The only words in Latin where we see this pronounced as a diphthong are huius, cuius, huic, cui, and hui. All these are examples of parts of the declension for quiqui quote and hic hic hoc. Every time, except for when you see it in these words, the letters U and I together do not make a diphthong. Additionally, in Latin, you'll have some non-diphthong double vowels. In this case, the vowels are pronounced each separately. We're not used to seeing a double I in English, but in Latin, you'll pronounce it E-E. -E. In meus mea meum, we have this E-U sound, the E-A sound, and then another E-U sound. Each of these vowels should be pronounced individually. Mea, meus, meum. In the Latin word for today, hodie, you should pronounce both the I and the E on the end, sort of like ho, di, a, ho, di, a. The I makes a sort of Y sound in this case. Additionally, in Latin, sometimes students don't know where to emphasize a particular syllable. Romans didn't really use emphasis so much as they used long and short vowels. You can think of it as emphasis for now, because that's good enough for introductory Latin, but as you get into higher levels of Latin when you're doing poetry, the long and short vowels will really come into play. We see those indicated through the macrons, the long lines over the letters, which, by the way, the Romans never used, and we have put those in as a sort of after-the-fact way to indicate long and short vowels. So you're going to see emphasis usually before a double consonant, like in puellae. The L is longer, puellae. You'll also see diphthongs usually emphasized. Puellae emphasizes both the E-L sound and the diphthong. Dane day, the other word we saw earlier, has the emphasis on dane. If the word has neither a double consonant nor a diphthong, emphasis will go on the second to last syllable a lot of the time. As in English, no rules are really hard or fast, and there's always exceptions to the rules. So you may have noticed in your foray into Latin that there's no letter J showing up. Sometimes you'll see a J, sometimes not. But the J makes an I or a Y sound, like ya. Yeah. So in a translation, you may have Jupiter, who's the equivalent for Zeus. It's going to be pronounced Jupiter in Latin. Sometimes you might have the J. Sometimes it might just be an I at the beginning. It depends on the text you're using. For Juno, it's the same thing, you know. For the word youth, you're going to have two vowels at the beginning, but you're going to pronounce it like a J here at the start, Uanus. You may also have noticed that there's no W. In Latin inscriptions, sometimes you'll notice that the U is replaced with a V, and they're in all caps. So, like in Jupiter, you'll see that the U is replaced with a V, and here too for you know. That's where the idea of a W comes from, and why it's written like two Vs instead of two Us. 
I know in the lowercase and sometimes in the capital, we can get away with rounding off our W's. However, in the typeface, as in this video, you'll notice it's two V's put together. And so it all kind of blends into this linguistic phenomenon. V changes to the sound of a W. Uenis, Wenio, Wenire, Weni, Wentis. Waleo, Wale, Re, Walui. So in all cases, this V changes to the sound of a W. Some patterns of sound for pronunciation of the various verbs. When you're saying the four principal parts in a first conjugation, which is governed by the letter A, you're going to say laboro, laborare, laborawi, laboratus. For laudo, to praise, laudo, laudare, laudawi, laudatus. Ambulo has the same pattern. Ambulo, ambulare, ambulawi, ambulatus. Second conjugation has a long E sound on the penultimate E. Maneo, manere, manui, manitus. Waleo, walere, walui. So the long E creates emphasis before the O. That's different from the third conjugation that has a short penultimate E. Ere instead of ere. So intelegre has a quicker ere on the end. If it were second conjugation, it would be intelegere, but it isn't. It's intelegere. In ago, we see ago, agare. The ere is quicker. If we're looking back at the second conjugation, the long e comes into play on the first principal part, moneo. Whereas notice on the third conjugation, there is no e before this o. That's how you can identify the verbs in a dictionary setting. Another type of third conjugation verb, the third io, has a short ere as well. Capio, capere, capere, kepi, captus. Finally, the fourth conjugation, which is governed by the letter i, will have a similar appearance in the first principal part to the third io conjugation. However, it's in the second principal part where we see the change. Third conjugation and third io have this ere. Whereas, audio audire is going to have this I instead of an E. Audio, audire, audiwi, auditus. Wenio, wenire, weni, wentis.